Dear colleagues, I am Dr. Keur Parekh, Senior Cardiologist at Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad. Today, I'll be going over a case of left main multivessel angioplasty with stenting. In a case of seropositive illness, patient who is actively being treated for HIV positive illness with significant thrombocytopenia. Left main coronary artery supplies two-thirds of the blood to the heart mainly and almost exclusively to the left ventricle. The distal left main coronary artery ends in bifurcation sometimes in trifurcation giving rise to left anterior descending and left circumflex artery and sometimes an intermediate artery. Left main distal bifurcation lesion where more than 70% of left main lesion is involved in the distal bifurcation. Distal left main bifurcation the atherosclerosis extends into LAD as well as left circumflex ostium and these become fairly complex cases. Left main distal bifurcation lesion. Left main coronary artery stenosis as I mentioned is the most challenging lesion in patient with acute coronary syndrome putting the patient at high risk for life-threatening LV dysfunction and arrhythmias. Since the amount of myocardium at risk is very high, patient is often in cardiogenic shock and the risk of death is high, more so in the left dominant system. Thrombocytopenia is associated with variety of etiologies. These include increased utilization or destruction, decreased bone marrow production, various immune mechanisms, adverse drug effect, infectious agents. The patient we are presenting today had significant thrombocytopenia in relation to both his seropositive illness and his treatment. Having both of them together is a relatively rare finding but increased cases of such patients are now seen in our clinics. PCI, that is angioplasty with stenting as well as coronary artery bypass grafting, both have not been an option for patients with severe thrombocytopenia because these patients are felt to be at increased risk for bleeding complication resulting from the required periprocedural anticoagulation and post-procedural dual antiplatelet therapy, more so in PCI. This speculation is indirectly supported by a recent study done by Overgaard and others in which the baseline thrombocytopenia emerged as an independent predictor of mortality in patients undergoing PCI. Thrombocytopenia are classified as mild, moderate, severe, whereby in this case we are presenting it severe with less than 50,000 platelets per ml. This is a 56-year-old male, history of hypertension with previous long-standing history of angina, chest pain, coronary artery disease with recent unstable angina as well as significantly positive treadmill who in previous angiography was found to have triple vessel coronary disease and the new angiography also was consistent with triple vessel coronary disease with significant progression to distal severe left main disease. His vitals, blood pressure, heart rate were normal but as you see his platelet count was down to 39,000 for cubic millimeter and seropositive HIV positive illness. Echocardiography showed normal left atrial, left ventricular RA, RV with normal LV function with no significant regional wall motion abnormalities. Reduced LV compliance with reasonably normal cardiac valves with mild mitral and tricuspid regurgitation, mild pulmonary hypertension to 40 millimeter mercury with no evidence of clot vegetation 
and no evidence of coarctation or any other abnormalities. Geography report showed distal left main coronary artery disease with osteal 60% and mid 80% lesion. Ramus showed diffuse disease in the mid segment. Left circumflex artery non dominant but fairly large showed 50% osteal plaque extending to 70% lesion. First OM showed 80% lesion. Mid RCA proximally showed 99% lesion. After proper consenting, patient was taken to the cath lab where through right radial excess his coronary arteries were approached. Seven French guide was used to cannulate the left coronary system. Multiple angiographic views were taken of the coronary anatomy. As you see the angiographic views shows significant mid LED, osteal circumflex, distal RCA. Wires were introduced, guide wires were introduced into the LED and left circumflex artery with proper dilatation of left circumflex artery as well as LED. Subsequently, a drug eluting US FDA stent was introduced into the lesion in the left circumflex artery across the left main artery. The stent was inflated. After dilating the left circumflex artery, wire was, which was already crossed in the LED, a balloon dilatation was done in the LED followed by placement of a USFDA drug eluting stent in the LED followed by high pressure inflation post inflation in the same stent. Subsequent angiographic view showed widely open LED and circumflex artery. Left main coronary artery was subsequently dilated. After opening the left main coronary artery, selected dilatation was done in the osteal circumflex followed by the placement of stent in the ostium circumflex. Finally, the T stenting was done in the ostium of the left circumflex. Once the left osteal circumflex was placed, skissing balloon was done with the balloon in LED and left circumflex followed by dilatation of the proximal and mid segment of left main artery which is known as proximal optimization. Final angiographic results showed widely patterned left main, osteal LED, osteal circumflex, mid circumflex and mid LED. Significant unprotected left main disease constitutes about 5 to 10 percent of patients undergoing coronary angiography and various studies have been done to look into revascularization of unprotected left main coronary artery comparing PCI versus surgical revascularization. PCI with drug eluting stent versus coronary artery bypass grafting again shows no significant difference between the two revascularization strategies in terms of risk of death, risk of composite outcome of death, MI and CVA. Rate of target vessel revascularization was significantly higher in the group that received stents rather than in bypass surgery. Other clinical trials have demonstrated a higher rate of repeat revascularization after PCI compared to CABG, but overall lower incidence of cerebrovascular events and no difference in overall major adverse cardiovascular events. Thrombocytopenia should be considered an important addition to PCI risk prediction models to improve their precision and clinical applicability. So in a patient with bifurcation, left main PCI and seropositive thrombocytopenia, 
which is reasonably rare, a strategy has to develop and in this case we went ahead with the PCI. To avoid significant bleeding, we avoid non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, avoid GP2B3A, utilize proton pump inhibitor intravenously during the procedure and during the hospitalization followed by oral agent. Aspirin should be used in low dose form 75 to 80 milligram and if patient is receiving any other anticoagulant agent triple therapy should definitely be avoided. We prefer radial approach in this patient though they are high risk because it reduces subsequent bleeding tendencies and we restrict dual antiplatelet therapy to one month preferably not longer than three to four months second or third generation drug eluting stent especially the latest generation drug eluting stents with extremely fine struts are preferred Take home message in this case is that coronary bifurcation, left main bifurcation disease is a very challenging subset in inter interventional cardiology. In patients with severe thrombocytopenia, PCI is still feasible and well tolerated. As mentioned, the drawbacks are bleeding complication which are frequent and may have negative clinical impact. Stenting of unprotected left main coronary artery stenosis can be performed with good results in carefully selected patients. Single stent strategy is preferred. However, provisional stenting should be available as in this case, we had to provisionally stent the osteal uh, circumflex artery in which case it was a provisional T stenting, it's called T, tap technique where there was a slight protrusion of the circumflex stent into the left main followed by kissing balloon to give proper apposition and dilatation. Finally by proximal dilatation of the rest of the stent in the left main coronary artery. Careful management of radial artery as the excess site where anyhow the complication rate are very few and a shorter DAPT protocol may help to improve their outcome. Clause monitoring is always advisable.